Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 10 of the chapter, The Solid State. I'm now going to start explaining packing efficiency to you. As you know that in a unit cell, the entire space is not occupied by the spheres. You have empty spaces which are known as voids. In the previous video, I explained the placement of octahedral and tetrahedral voids in a unit cell, in a face-centered cubic unit cell. So we understand that these voids are always present. So when is a solid going to be a harder solid or a more efficiently packed solid? A solid in which the voids are minimum and most of the volume in the unit cell has been occupied by the constituent particles that would have a more efficient packing. You understand the concept? The better packing or more compact arrangement, the stronger the solid. The more stable the solid state, the harder the substance. So we say any, any kind of a crystal which has a better, which has a more uh, compact arrangement that is more efficiently packed. So efficiency of packing tells us, gives us an idea how dense or how condensely are the constituent particles in the unit cell arranged. So one by one, we are going to study the efficiency of packing of the HCP, CCP or the face centered cubic unit cell of the body centered unit, uh, body centered unit cell and the simple cubic unit cell. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the face centered cubic or HCP and CCP structure. So what do we understand by if, how would we find out the efficiency of packing? We know that the balls or the spheres are occupying the corners and they are occupying the face centers. Whatever is the volume occupied by the spheres, if we divide that by the total volume of the unit cell and multiply it by 100, we will get that percentage of the unit cell which has been occupied by the spheres or the constituent particles. So that is efficiency of packing. Efficiency of packing is the percentage of the volume occupied by the constituent particles and higher the percentage of volume occupied by the constituent particles, greater is the packing efficiency. You will understand this when we do all the three kinds of packing efficiency, when I explain all three to you. Let us start with the first one in this video. I have made this unit cell and I've shown you one side. In HCP, CCP structure, we take the face-centered cubic unit cell. The face-centered cubic unit cell has balls or spheres in the corners. So imagine spheres in the corners of this room, all spheres, but I've shown you only two of the corners just to make our calculations or how I'm going to calculate uh, to explain that. So all the corners are occupied and if there are six faces, all the six faces, the center of each face also has a sphere. So I take the Rubik's cube to show that the, the four corners, the four cubes on the corners are occupied and the center of each face. So whichever face, and if you see one corner is, is being shared by three sides. One corner ball is being shared by three sides. And actually there is a fourth ball of the next uh, cube also. Therefore, uh, anyway, for this unit cell, you have to understand that a corner is here and every center, center of every face is occupied. So I've drawn this diagram to show you that you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H are the eight corners of the cube. Let us imagine this row. And we take one face to, uh, to calculate the efficiency of packing. On this one face, if we see what, and we look at the diagonal here, across here, what do we see? We see that there is a ball here on this corner A, there's a ball here or the sphere here in the corner C, and there is a sphere in the middle of the face. So since this is like this, tilted like this, you are, you are seeing it a little, if I made it here, you will see one ball here, one ball in the center, and one ball right here. And all three balls are touching each other. So we imagine this triangle, this is A, B, C, and we take this triangle A, B, C. Now this triangle A, B, C, that is A, B, C, you could imagine it like this. This triangle is a right angle triangle. If this is A, or if we take it on the top, if this is A, then this is B, and this is C, and this is the hypotenuse, 
right? It's a right angled triangle. This is the right angle here and this is the hypotenuse. And along the hypotenuse we have the ball or the sphere of A, the sphere in the middle and the sphere C. That is what we've shown here that A, B and C and all the three balls across the diagonal or across the along the hypotenuse they are touching each other so we have three spheres touching each other across the face diagonal or the uh, the hypotenuse of a right angled triangle and we know the pythagorean theorem what does the pythagoras theorem tell us it tells us that the the square of the hypotenuse is in a right angle triangle is equal to the square of both the sides, the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So the hypotenuse here is this and since it is a cube, a, a cubic arrangement, the side AB and BC are equal. So let us assume that these sides AB and BC, each side is small a and the hypotenuse, the total length is B. Let us assume that the side is A and the hypotenuse is B. Now, in this triangle ABC, that is triangle ABC, which is a right angle triangle, the Pythagoras theorem would be applicable. Therefore, the square of the hypotenuse, that is AC square, should be equal to AB square plus BC square. You get this? So, in triangle ABC, AC square, that is the hypotenuse, the square of the hypotenuse, which is also B square because we assumed the length of the hypotenuse to be B, which is equal to B square, is equal to BC square plus AB square, the square of the two sides. Since AB and BC are equal, and what is the length? A in a cube, it is the edge. It is the edge of a cube all of these all these lengths are equal so these, this is a this is a this is a all of these are a and the hypotenuse that we showed that is b so b square should be equal to bc is also a and ab is also a so b square should be equal to a square plus a square which is equal to twice a square is this clear or this can also be written as so if b square is equal to 2a square what is b b will be equal to the under root of all of this the under root of 2 is square root of 2 and the square root of a square would be a so we can write that the value of b that is the length of the hypotenuse should be equal to under root 2a right now if we assume that these spheres the radius all of these spheres are identical we assume all the constituent particles to be identical. So this radius of each sphere is the same, right? And let us assume that this radius is R. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this calculation? What is the aim? How are we going to calculate the packing efficiency? We need to find out the volume occupied by all the spheres divided by the total volume of the unit cell multiplied by 100. Remember, it is the percentage of volume occupied by the constituent particles. So we need to find out the volume of the unit cell. We need to find out the volume occupied by the sphere. So that is what we are doing. So if R is the radius of the sphere, then what is the, uh, what is B? How many radii does B have? Now, do you notice this? This is one sphere. So this is one radius here. This is one sphere. And this, in this sphere, along this diagonal, there is only one radius of this circle, right? There's only, let me use another color. There is only one radius of this circle. Then there is one radius of this circle and one radius of that circle on the other side and one radius here. So in all, how many radii do we have? We have four radii. If the radius of these spheres is R, then the total radius, the total radius of the entire hypotenuse in terms of the balls, what would be the total length in terms of radii? It would be equal to 4R, right? So we say if R is the radius of the sphere, we find that this length B can be written as 4R in terms of the radius. And we also know we had already calculated that B is equal to under root 2A. So we can say 4R is actually equal to under root 2A. Right? Now since 4R is equal to 2A, we are now 
why are we talking in terms of radius why did we talk why would we did we bring radius into the uh, conversation at all the reason is that our idea is to find out the volume of the total number of spheres in the unit cell and what is the volume of a sphere 4 by 3 pi r cube so we had to talk of that length in terms of radius that is the reason why we included this idea of radius and we calculated the length in terms of the radius. So we, from this we come to know that 4r is equal to under root 2a. If that is so, rearrange it. In other words, if 4r is equal to under root 2a, what would a be? a would be equal to 4r upon under root 2. Right? And if you solve this, 4 can be written as 2 into 2 into 2 and 2 can be written as under root 2 into under root 2 divided by under root 2 so one of the under root 2's gets cancelled out. So what are you left with? You are left with 2 root 2 r. So a can also be written as 2 root 2 r. Now we talked of the hypotenuse in terms of radius so hypotenuse b was equal to 4 r and the side A in terms of radii is equal to 2 root 2 R. A is equal to 2 root 2 R and B was equal to 4 R. So alternatively, if you had to calculate from this, you had to calculate the radius. Radius would be equal to A upon 2 root 2. It is just rearrangement of the equation. In cubic closed packing or in a face-centered cubic or HCP arrangement, in one unit cell, there are four atoms. How do we know that there are four atoms or four constituent particles or four spheres in a face-centered cubic unit cell? If you have eight corners, the eight corners, the spheres present on eight corners, each corner is equally divided by or equally uh, shared by four, uh, eight uh, unit cells. So every corner is being shared by one, two, three, four rooms plus four rooms on the upper floor if you take this corner. So every corner, the sphere on every corner is shared equally by eight unit cells. So the contribution of one sphere on a corner is only one eighth in a unit cell. And you have eight of these corners. So you have eight into one by eight, each one contributing one by eight. So the spheres on the corners contribute only one uh, sphere to the to one unit cell and the face centers the spheres which are present on the face centers as i told you that if i imagine this white board to be one sphere if there is a sphere inside the wall the wall is equally shared by two rooms the room behind this and this room a corner is shared by eight rooms but a wall is shared only by two rooms so a sphere which is present in the in the face center is contributing half of it is in this room and half of the sphere is in that room so only half belongs to this unit cell and you have six faces since you have six faces so how many six into half will be three so three spheres are being contributed by the face centered uh, face the atoms on the face centers and one sphere is contributed by the eight atoms which are present on the corners of the unit cell. So there are four spheres in a unit cell. In a face centered cubic unit cell, there are four spheres. And whatever volume is occupied by those four spheres, whatever is left behind, that forms the void. So from this, we understand that in CCP or face centered cubic arrangement, each cell has four spheres. The volume of one sphere, we know what is the volume of a sphere? It is 4 by 3 pi r cube. So volume of one sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube and there are four spheres in one room, which means what is the volume of four spheres of all the spheres in a unit cell? It is 4 into 4 by 3 pi r cube because there are four uh, spheres in one unit cell. So it would be 4 into 4 by 3 pi r cube. And what is the total volume of the unit cell? The total volume of a cube is a cube has a length, a breadth and a height. All the length, breadth and height are all equal. It is a. And what is the volume of a cube? A volume of a cube is length into breadth into height. That is a into a into a. In other words, the volume of a cube of the entire unit cell would be a cube. And we had calculated A earlier. What was A? 
a was equal to mm -mm, yes a was equal to 2 root 2 r right a we had calculated to be equal to 2 root 2 r so we say volume of the unit cell total volume of the unit cell is 2 root 2 r whole cube because it is a cube and a is 2 root 2 r so it is 2 root 2 r whole cube so what have we found out what this was the aim of the entire derivation we wanted to find out the volume of the spheres and the volume of the unit cell so in order to calculate the packing efficiency what do we have to do we have to write down the volume of the spheres divided by the volume of the unit cell the total volume of the unit cell into 100 will give you the percentage efficiency of packing so that is what we do packing efficiency would then be equal to volume of the spheres divided by the total volume into 100 so volume of the spheres is 4 into 4 by 3 pi r cube and the volume of the unit cell the total unit cell is a cube which is 2 root 2 r whole cube into 100 so let us solve this 4 into 4 is 16 by 3 pi r cube and the denominator is 2 root 2 r whole cube so 2 cube is 8 2 into 2 into 2 is 8 and root 2 into root 2 into root 2 would be root 2 whole cube so root 2 into root 2 would be 2 and 8 2's are 16 and 1 root 2 will be left behind so 16 root 2 r cube will be the denominator so r cube and r cube get cancelled put the value of pi and solve this you'll get the packing into 100 the packing efficiency will turn out to be 74 percent and do you know that this is the highest packing efficiency or the face centered cubic uh, unit cell or arrangement is the most efficiently packed so those solids which are packed or which are arranged in the face centered cubic type of which have face centered cubic type of unit cells they are the most dense and in these solids the the space occupied by the whites is the least although i'll be solving the uh, other the body centered cubic unit cell and the simple cubic unit cell in the next video but right now just understand this that this is the highest efficiency of packing so with this i'll finish the video if you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now